Hey guys, this is Ben Morrow. I'm a senior concept designer and art director in the game and film industry, currently working on Halo Infinite. Today I wanted to show you guys some cool stuff you can do using the new KeyShot that has some GPU accelerated functions to help speed up renders. Um, I've only used KeyShot with the CPU rendering and I was curious to test out how much faster the new GPU features are. So we'll try that out today in this post-apocalyptic looking scene I assembled in Blender. I usually use Blender just because it's really fast and quick to mock things up and assemble things. You can uh, just move things around really quick. You can do a lot of this stuff in KeyShot, but it's just way faster to do it in a program like Blender that's free and fast and easy, and um, you can just get results really fast. So I'll usually assemble things like this, then I'm going to export it and open it up in KeyShot real quick. So the majority of my work I render out of EV and Cycles and Octane for most stuff, but there's a couple cool things in KeyShot that I really like. One in particular is one of their tune sketch shaders, which creates a really cool look to things. I used it this year to get a sketch look to my renderings for Inktober. I wanted to try to get an Akira Otomo looking style to some of these renderings. So I'm going to go through kind of the process for this and show how to set all that up. So outputting kind of these perspective line drawing looking designs out of KeyShot. I prefer to do this in Blender, but there isn't anything quite like that just yet. There's a couple people making something like this, but it's um, I still feel like KeyShot has some really cool features and the ease of flexibility to adjust things to get the exact line drawing you want is, is pretty nice in the program at the moment. So I'll show you how to do this in KeyShot and also show you, we can do some tests to see how fast their new GPU rendering ability is and test out how much faster our renders can get out of this program which is always exciting. All the programs updating to GPU rendering to boost render times is always a bonus to get more work done in less time. So these are just some of the experiments I did for Inktober this year. It's really nice to have a range of styles that we can output our designs at. Some of this stuff would be really handy for maybe a graphic novel or some early stages of production where they just want shot design and get some really simple black and white sketches of what this space could look like and different shots and settings for the film or game. It's a really cool look to experiment and play around with and hopefully it helps you with some current or future projects you're working on. So when you load the models in the program it'll look something like this and you can just start applying materials in KeyShot. I'm going to be using some of these cool tune shaders. I think I've been using this one in particular. Tune shaded white. And you just drag and drop onto all your different materials. It should go pretty quick. Most of the materials are spread across multiple of the same objects. And another way to do it, if you just want all the materials with the same object, is dragging and dropping your material all the way to the top of your object stack, and it will apply the material to all the objects in the scene. So once you get the material applied, you can see how it's pretty cool. It just looks like a cool black and white drawing and because the models are pretty detailed you get some really nice scale and activity to your scene and really sells the scope of everything. So the reason I like this material I'm trying to replicate it in Blender just so I have it all in one program but for now KeyShot just makes it really easy to edit all this stuff and make some really compelling graphic images with this shader. You can turn environment shadows on and off just to see what it's doing. This is kind of the overall line work that you're getting out of it. And you can adjust the contour width here, which makes the lines thinner or adjust it more to get really thick, bold lines. But maybe it starts getting a little too thick and not and kind of ruining the look I'm after. But you can play with the contour width. The contour angle helps a lot as well. You can get kind of Things looking darker closer to the camera or further away or the edges are a little more emphasized over other things. And you can turn the shadow strength up and down, of course. You can make the contour quality more sharper as well. You can make it thinner or thicker uniformly overall. And turning the environment shadows on allows you to adjust things. Usually it creates a default ambient occlusion look based on the sort of HDRI that's preloaded in. I like to go in the environment settings and turn on sun and sky 
which allows you to manually place the sunlight and give some really cool cast shadows to get some really nice dramatic graphic looking shapes in your scene to allow you to pre-visualize the environment shot you're looking for in a really cool graphic way that again allows you to get some interesting manga otomo akira looking panels with one click so again really cool stuff really fast and this is one of the things i really enjoy using keyshot for i can't quite find in most other programs at the moment so first as a baseline i rendered out 5k image with my 32 core Threadripper. The Threadripper does a really good job of rendering and it's really fast, but compared to GPU, it definitely isn't up to snuff, uh, especially once you start getting into multiple GPUs. So the baseline render I got was around two minutes, about a minute and 59 seconds for this at 5k. So with Keyshot 9, I'm going to use the new GPU and denoise features. So I'll turn this on and Let's make sure we're getting all four GPUs. So all four GPUs are activated right now. And I'll go over and switch over into the GPU mode. And it just converts the scene over and allows you to start using the GPUs to render. So in the render settings, I'm just turning on use real-time GPU rendering. In order to render with the GPU, you need to turn off the custom controls, or at least on my machine. So I'll just maybe do maximum samples and set it to maybe 10. With the denoising feature, you don't really need too many samples and it really speeds up the render times. So let's try rendering that out as a baseline with the four 2080 Ti's. So that's pretty awesome. We went from two minutes with the CPU down to 22 seconds with using all of our GPUs. Uh, so this is a just an awesome increase in render time speed. Honestly, even just the viewport render that's just instantaneous using the GPUs is kind of all I really need. And that just is immediate, like one second to render this out, you know? So it's super impressive, the speed increase, definitely. As someone who uses Keyshot for this tune shader quite a bit, this is definitely a sweet increase in speed and I would use this in my work for sure. It's just a nice boost in speed. You know, I could just wait a couple seconds and screen grab this or render it out real quick and get a lot more work done each day than I could before previously, just re only relying on my CPU. So the NVIDIA RTX increase on this is a huge boost and is really helpful and useful, and I would definitely use this in my workflows. So with a single 20 ATI at 10 samples, we got 17.5 seconds, which is really awesome. The clarity of the line work and everything looks really nice. The denoising helps a lot. Just to shave your render times down from two minutes to 17 seconds is excellent. If you're doing a ton of this stuff every day or animations, this will just save you so much time. So with all four GPUs, we got 20 seconds at 10 samples. So with two 2080 Ti's turned on, the render time was down to around 27 seconds at 10 samples. Again, it's, it's interesting results to see. All these are obviously faster than the CPU, but it's interesting to see the variable results with the GPUs, the way the key shots handles everything. It seemed like all four ended up being slower than a single GPU for some reason. I think a lot of it has to do with the material being loaded onto the GPU and then it starts rendering. And to do that on one GPU is obviously faster than four. So it's actually faster if you are using Keyshot with GPU rendering just to use one or maybe two GPUs. Uh, the render times I got were a bit faster just with a single GPU than multiple GPUs. So it's definitely, it's early days on Keyshot adopting GPU rendering technology, but it's pretty exciting to see what's happening. And even the slowest GPU speeds I got today were significantly faster than just using CPU. My two minute render with a 32 core Threadripper as my baseline, I was getting anywhere between six seconds and 25 seconds using the GPUs with around 10 samples and for the quickest ones around one or two samples. So this is really exciting stuff and I think it's a really useful tool to start experimenting with and trying out and hope you guys give this a try and speeds up your workflow like it has mine. And I hope you guys enjoy watching this and I'll see you next time.